Hi there and welcome to the sew along video. This is a pattern designed for knits so I'm going to be sewing this with an overlocker mainly. So you're going to need to set your overlocker up with four threads of colour that match your fabric and because I've patterned this with a 6mm quarter inch seam allowances make sure that your stitch width is set to 6mm. In addition to this you're going to need to have some way of completing the hem so you're going to either need a cover stitch machine or a twin needle on a domestic sewing machine or I'll just show you how you can do this on a plain sewing machine with a straight stitch and if you do use a plain sewing machine with a straight stitch just make sure that you have a ball needle in your machine so that that needle doesn't pierce the um, yarns and cause a ladder later on as you're wearing the garment. So uh, when you're ready we'll get started. Um, just another note too, we're going to sew on the edge of our fabric. Our overlocker blade is just designed to trim off the stray threads and bound the edge so there's no need to cut any fabric off as you sew. So let's get straight into preparing the band. So with our band we have two pairs, so other people might call that four mirrors. We've cut two up this way and we've cut two up this way. So you should have two sets. On one of the short edges you'll have no notches or pattern markings and that edge is the back and on the other edge part way down you'll see a notch and the one with the notch on it is going to go into our side seam. So what we need to do is separate your pairs like so. What we need to do is sew one of these to one of these because we need to sew it through the center back. So what I'm going to do, so I don't get confused, is place these right side up like so. Now I need to make sure the curve is correct so this one right side up will sew to this one and then this one will sew to this one. So pop a pin in that edge just to hold it into place and pop a pin in the other edge to hold that into place. So what we're going to do is overlock through these center back seams and when I said you need to make sure the curve is correct what you'll see is if you open it up the curve runs like that. So place those pieces right side together and then come to your overlocker and overlock the center back seam into place. and repeat on the other piece. Now open this up and we want to place these two pieces right sides together with the seams matching like so. And place a pin there to hold that centre back position in place and if you work along the front you'll see notches. Now the notched edge is the upper edge and the lower edge, sorry the unnotched edge is the lower edge. So match the lower edge together as well. Come to the other side and match that together. So what we're going to do now is overlock the entire bottom edge of this piece. So we're going to be overlocking the outside curve. That's the curve with no notches in it.
when you get to the centre back seam it's a good idea to just make sure that the seams sit opposite each other it just makes it a little bit easier to go over the bulk Now we're going to overlock from the edge here, so this is the notch here, from the edge here across to the first notch here. So that's as far as we want to go. So this is the centre front, so you need to overlock to here and then run your overlocking off. And we're going to do this for both ends. So just run it off the edge like that and then go to the other end and do exactly the same thing. Now turn this through. So what we're going to do now is overlock the entire bottom edge of this piece. So we're going to be overlocking the outside curve. That's the curve with no notches in it. When you get to the centre back seam it's a good idea to just make sure that the seams sit opposite each other, it just makes it a little bit easier to go over the bulk. Now we're going to overlock from the edge here, so this is the notch here, from the edge here, we're going to sew from one end through the centre front notch and come off at the second notch here. And we're going to do that for both sides. then come to the other end and we'll do exactly the same thing. I'm going to go through the first notch and come off at the second notch. So the back band has two pieces cut on the fold that look like this. So they're mirror images of each other. So you'll notice at the centre of one of them there's a notch. So that shows us the upper edge. So what we're going to do is open these up and place them right sides together matching that notch. And we're going to overlock first these this side together and then this side together. I'm 
Okay, so the side, the top edge that had the notch is the slightly wider angled out edge. So when you're ready, turn that so it is wrong sides together or right sides out. So now we're going to sew the body of the garment together and I'm going to start with the back. So place your back right side up and you know it's the back because there's two notches at the side here where our sleeve is going to sew in. And then take the sleeve that matches that and place it right side together. So we want to match those double notches there and overlock that seam into place. Open that up and come to the other side and we're going to sew the sleeve, the other sleeve, into the other side. So place the other side right sides together to the sleeve and overlock that seam. Open that up on one side and hold it with a pin and put it on the other side and match the sleeve area and overlock that. And then go back to where you pinned the other side and overlock. Now what I'd like you to do is fold this so that we have the back at the back and the front at the front. And you'll know the difference because there's two notches for the back neckline and a single notch for the front neckline. And that'll just help you out if you're getting a bit confused when you put the sleeves in. So here is our double notch at the back and a single notch at the front here. And what we're going to do is, and this is going to seem a bit strange, take this end and match the area that you chained off that last notch to the front on the wrong side, like so. What we're going to be doing, so this is wrong side out to the band here. So this is going to be overlocked around and then we're going to flip it over to hide that seam. So all you need to do now is go around the top and match your notches to the seam. So we have a notch that matches to the side of the raglan sleeve. There's a notch that matches to the notch at the center of the sleeve. Another notch for the back of the sleeve. And then we want the seam to match to the double notches of the back. And then just go ahead and go around and do exactly what we've done in reverse on the other side. Or you could just follow it through so the next notch here matches like so. This will be quite bulky with your overlocker depending on the fabric you've chosen. So just be careful and if you need to go slowly. And then as we come back to the front we want these two areas to cross over. 
Now bear in mind when we wear this we want this side to be on top like that so this side needs to be underneath. So it's a good idea to hold those in place like so and if you need to just pop a pin. So now we're going to overlock around the top and it's a good idea to not start from the centre front so start somewhere else. I'm going to start somewhere near the shoulder. Okay, so if we turn this so it's right side out, this is what we're looking at. So this side needs to be on top, and now this side needs to come down to the side seam. And the top of the seam will go here, and you'll match the notch there. So if you just pin that in place for now to hold it. And then this side here will do the same thing on the other side. So what we want to do is have right over left as we're wearing it. And just pin that in place there. We have a neck band that we attach to the centre front. So take your centre front panel and find your neck band piece, which is a short piece. We're going to fold this in half lengthwise and sew it to the front neckline. There's a notch at the centre of the front, a single notch that shows us this is the front piece. And at the very centre of the neck band here, there are notches as well so we need to make sure that that sews on nice and straight. So when I'm sewing the body of the garment together, so this is the sleeve and this is the front piece, you'll notice that they don't match at the neck edge and that's exactly what we're looking for. What we need to do is sew the front to the sleeve matching the notch and you'll find that this will stop six mil quarter of an inch short of the top and that's exactly what we want. We want to leave a gap between the folded edge of the band and the upper edge of the neckline.
So place your garment like this so it's inside out with the back at the back and the front at the front and then take your collar and we're going to pin it into position. So find the seam at the centre back where it's joined and that goes on the outside so that will match directly to the double notch which shows us the back of the garment. And in all other respects it's exactly the same as the other way of sewing the garment but what we're going to do is sew off at the edge of the neckband here. So as you come around continue matching the notches and this is the second notch area on that collar piece. Make sure it's turned out and what we want to do is making sure this seam faces into the sleeve. We want to make sure that that part there matches to that part there. If you need to, go ahead to your plain sewer and stitch that in place to hold it. But if you don't need to, that's fine as well. Because what's going to happen is when we've finished sewing this, this band is then going to wrap around and cross through the body at the front. Now this is also the position for the strap, but we'll worry about that in a moment. So go ahead and pin this into place and then sew that. So now you can go ahead and pin your band into place through the side seam and if you're using a back band you could pin that into place as well. So what we do is turn this to the right side and here is our front neck band and this band is going to cross over and match to the notch at the side seam at the front. And then this side is going to do the same thing. And we'll go ahead and we'll tidy up that overlocking around the collar edge just in a moment. So because I don't want to tell a lie and I completely forgot about sewing this band in when I made this sample, what you need to do, I've actually gone and unpicked this. So once you've pinned the front band into place matching the notch at the side seam, then making sure you know where the upper edge is, the double notch edge, match that to the back seam notch there. So all these layers, which is going to be six layers, needs to be overlocked together. So this is an optional band, 
but um, it does look quite good with it. It just sort of pulls in the back because of the swing. You might find if you don't put the back band in that the garment might be slightly unbalanced when you wear it. Right, so when you've pinned in this side, and that's right sides together, match the other side. And um, now you'll go ahead and sew the underarm seam and we'll include that as we go. So because this was um, an after thought, what I did was um, unpick the seam, which I hate unpicking, overlocking. So when we sew up the side seam now, if you have the band in, as you come through the underarm here, you will have a lot of of bulk to sew through so just be very careful and go slowly with your overlocking so you don't smash any needles if you need to you might find it easier to use your plain machine and sew the stitch in first and then overlock it later so the other way of sewing um, these six layers together if you don't want to have that much bulk if your fabric's really heavy is just to create a big tube with your fabric so you would be sewing instead of sewing um, the front band and the back band into the side seam. This would just be one piece like this and it would sit free. If you had issues with it moving up and down while you're wearing it, you could always tack stitch it through to the body of the garment. But certainly um, if your fabric is bulky, that is another way of sewing this garment. So now we have that pinned into place, what we need to do is sew the side seams and the underarms. So come to one of the underarms and fold it like this, one of the sleeves I mean, sorry. So fold it right sides together. So what we're going to do now is sew up through the sleeve to the underarm and then sew down through the body of the garment. So making sure we have right sides together. I'm going to start at the wrist area. going to get a bit bulky at the underarm area just make sure that those underarm seams sit directly on top of each other and uh, make sure you have all four layers of fabric in the correct place and don't forget to take out those pins And also as you go through just make sure that that is right on the very edge when you overlock it through. We have another notch to match. And then through to the hem of the garment. So now just go ahead and repeat that on the other side. So now we're working on the hems. The hem allowance for this garment is one and a half centimetres, which is nine sixteenths of an inch. If you have a cover stitcher, you can just go ahead and cover stitch the sleeves and the body right now. And if you don't have a cover stitcher, 
what I'm going to do is just overlock my raw edges and then run a double line of stitching with my plain sewer. So go ahead and just secure the um, lower edge of the hem and the lower edge of the sleeves. So if you have access to a cover stitch machine to do your hems it's a much better idea or even if you have a twin needle on a domestic machine that will give you a really good result as well. What um, the twin needle and those stretch stitches do is they just allow an extra bit of give. If you put too much pressure on some of these seams they can snap as you wear them. Um, but as I mentioned earlier if you don't have access to that you can certainly put a ball needle in your machine and uh, sew the hems like that. So all I've done is turn up the hem by the seam the hem allowance, which is one and a half centimeters, which is nine sixteenths of an inch. And if you need to, you could press this into place before you sew. And I'm stitching directly through the overlocking line. Um, I prefer to sew my first stitch line on my hems from the rear of my garment, but it's entirely up to you. Now because I like to make my garments look like they have been sewn with a cover stitcher, I'm just going to run a second line of stitching exactly parallel to the first on the fold edge around the entire hem. So now I'm going to do the sleeves. Just going to trim my overlocking back and I'm going to tuck that within the seam allowance. To make our straps, we're going to fold them in half lengthways, right sides together, and overlock through the long edge.
Now take a loop turner and turn these through so that they are wrong sides together, which is right side out. So before we sew the straps on we need to deal with this front neck band edge here. So all I'm going to do is snip this thread back to around about an inch, two and a half centimeters. What I'm going to do is just bring it down like this and I'm going to stitch it on top of itself back on itself. So I'm going to stitch that thread into the overlocking line and that will just make sure that that can't ladder at the edge. Now if you're concerned about this edge here or you haven't quite overlocked it really close in, what you can do now is also just run a couple of back tacking stitches there just to secure that edge off and make sure it's all nice and tight. Now we're going to be putting the straps in in a minute. So now we'll do exactly the same thing on this side trim this back slightly what I might do is just I'll just secure that edge first so all I'm doing is stitching right where the top fold of the band is finishing and then into the overlocking line and I'm going to roll that overlocking onto itself, onto the overlocking line and I'm just going to stitch it down. Now of course you could use fray stop or um, get a needle and um, thread those threads back in, whatever you prefer, entirely up to you. So we have two straps, one end has a straight edge and the other end has an angle on it. So the straight edge end needs to sit on the seam here. So this seam here is where the sleeve, the back sleeve, meets the back of the garment. And when this gets sewn into place, if you have a look, when it comes around to the front, we need to make sure the angle goes down because the neckline goes down. So the very first thing we need to make sure of is that we have the straps sitting in the correct way, the correct orientation. So once you've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the strap on like this. So bear in mind it's going to sit like that and all I've done is sew it like this. I'm going to sew it on top of that seam and then I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to stitch it back down again there. So this is the straight edge and make sure that that um, seam line, that join edge is right pushed out. So what I'm going to do is just stitch it like so and back tack it a couple of times just to make sure it's nice and firm. And then to hide that what I'm going to do is bring it up like this. Now bear in mind it will come over again and I want to stitch it just past the seam line here. That's because that collar's going to roll anyway and it'll just help that sit in the correct place. So when that comes over, that part will help it roll towards the inside so that that will just help the seam there. Now the front position will depend on you. It's a good idea to go and try on the garment. I'll put suggested markings on the pattern, but it's a good idea to try this on and just make sure they sit in the correct place. And of course, if you like wide straps, it's really easy to just widen this pattern and make the straps wider. So for this other side, it's exactly the same thing. We want that angle to be on the down. So just arrange that so the strap is sitting the correct way. And then I'm going to stitch that onto that seam line. And then I'm turning it back on itself. And I'm going to hide that by stitching just over the join position. Making sure I back tack that nice and firmly to secure it. 
and of course we're hiding the raw edge there. So the position to sew the front strap is entirely up to you. Generally it's around about three or four centimeters from where the front meets this raglan. Um, three centimeters is one and three sixteenths of an inch but to get the exact position you'd really need to, to try this on. So when you've tried that on um, go ahead and sew that into place. Um, it's a good idea if you just overlock the edge there and then you could just stitch that into the seam like so. And just remember whatever you do on one side you need to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So the very last thing we need to do with this is um, I just want to show you if you have created a loop how we're going to tack stitch the uh, front collar to the back band within the seam allowance of the side seam. So I mentioned earlier that you might want to create a loop for the um, collar and back band and this needs a really good press so it's a really bad example. But um, what I meant is this can, because there's a seam here, it really needs to sit directly on that side seam and when you're wearing it because of the pull of the body it might just slide around a bit. Um, so this is designed to sit up here like this. Um, it gives you an empire waist effect but if you don't want it sitting that high of course you can adjust this position to whatever you'd like. But what I really suggest you do is when you've decided on the correct position for this just open the side seam up and we just want to run some tacking stitches through the side body. So what I've got here is uh, the front, the back, and this is the underarm here. And um, I probably should have pressed this first. What I'm going to do is just put the seam directly on top of the side seam. And I'm just going to run a couple of tacking stitches directly through the stitch line just to hold this into place. Like so. And those stitches will just sink into the um, seam so you won't notice them and it'll just help give a really tidy look to this garment. Um, and don't forget to do that on the other side. So uh, thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoy this garment. So that's it. Our garment is finished. Thank you for joining me with the Sew Along video. And don't forget to join up with my Facebook pattern discussion group which is Trish Newbury Design Pattern Discussion Group and you'll be able to catch up on the latest releases and get notification of releases before they happen and talk to others who have sewn the patterns. Thanks very much for joining me. I hope to see you again soon.